Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro, available now at Best Buy, and a smartwatch that comes with a flashlight and a couple other features, too. For Garmin, this watch is more of an incremental upgrade over what it's previously done. So I actually had the benefit of using this right after using the Phoenix 6 Pro, so I could see the similarities and at least some of the differences, of which, to be honest, there aren't that many. It probably shouldn't come as a surprise that the... Uh, Phoenix 7 Pro looks a lot like the 6 Pro and even like the other Phoenix 7 watches that are out there right now so you have a stainless steel body here uh, sapphire glass so there's plenty of protection this is a rugged smartwatch no question you can dive with this thing you can rock climb with it you can pretty much do anything you want with it and it probably will withstand the punishment uh, it uh, again that sort of fits with Garmin's penchant for making watches that are really made for active lifestyles and I mean real active lifestyles so this isn't like an Apple watch or other Android smartwatches that really are more like hybrids in the sense that they are integrated more with your smartphone than probably this is in this case you have a watch here that tracks a lot of things on its own and then syncs the data over to the Garmin Connect app, which by the way, is a critical point. It is a critical part of the whole user experience with this watch. So especially if you're new to Garmin smartwatches, uh, and especially if you're new to a smartwatch like this, then uh, you'll see what I mean. Uh, it, it is a very different experience. There aren't radical differences between uh, the 7 Pro and 6 Pro. So uh, one thing is definitely that there are improved sensors inside here. Uh, they're not radically different but they definitely make an impact uh, because of what they're capable of doing so the heart rate uh, is probably the biggest one in my opinion simply because what was already fairly accurate with previous Garmin watches is now even more so and that pays dividends in a number of ways based on what it is you're tracking so all the exercises you're tracking if you're training training regimens you name it anything that you're working on or that you're working out in the improved heart rate data obviously makes a big difference there now, the, the fit, generally speaking, including the charging port, that's all the same. So uh, the fit's going to largely be the same. So this is a 47 millimeter watch. Uh, but for the most part, the differences are largely based on, you know, certain things like that. There's that physical difference. And then, of course, there is the flashlight here. So this is really cool. Uh, one of my favorite features of this watch, simply because uh, you can use this in a couple different ways. So, for example, if I hold down here and... I go to, let's say, yeah, there we go. So we got strobe. So if I go to now the strobe on this side, and then we have also another option for the light here. So if I change it, right? So now it's blinking. And then if I change it to custom, it's something, you know, you have a faster blink and then blitz and then beacon, pulse, blink again. Yeah, so you get the picture. So you have that. Uh, you can always adjust the light that way. Now, if you go to flashlight here, you have the option also to make some other changes. So we can turn this off, right? So we turn it on, turn it off there. Okay, now we go back and then we can also adjust. So now we have a red light that turns on. There's a, now there's a, the beauty of this is that this actually works in a couple different ways. So if you want the red light on, you can leave it on, but you can also have a situation where if you're running, you can uh, see, there we go. Now we have back to white light. If you leave it on, for example, let's say you're running, and you, the swing of your arm will determine the color of the light. So if you're swinging forward, then we have a white light. But if you're swinging backwards, as your arm swings backwards, it it turns red. And the purpose for that is to kind of emulate if you're, you know, you're riding a bike or something. So you have the red light in the back and then the white light in the front. Uh, it's pretty neat. You don't have to do it though. I find that if you just leave either light on just uh, in whatever, uh, whatever mode you want to put it in is perfectly fine, uh, but it is kind of a cool feature that's in there. For the most part, the rest of the watch is going to be feel very similar, especially if you're coming from a previous Phoenix watch. This is an incremental upgrade, especially over the 6 Pro. So the flashlight's a cool feature to have, but it's again, it's not necessary if you don't feel like you need it. So uh, that's just one example. But I think for the tracking, in particular so if you're looking for better tracking well that's where things get a little more interesting so uh, all these features for the most part are back again like they were before the difference this time though is that the uh, the tracking is more precise as far as heart rate goes and that means that things like body battery and other uh, 
other data inputs that you'll see on the app uh, tell you a little bit more about what's going on. I'll move the watch over here to the side for a second here so you can see how the app also works. Uh, the you, You'll get an idea a sense here of what is available so the watch now gives you a certain number of metrics that you can pay attention to right so you have various things you can see on the watch but if you want to see more that's where the app comes in and the app of course breaks da down the data so that you understand where you stand really uh, things like training readiness body battery those types of features are more intricate on the app than anything you might see on the watch it's not to say you won't see anything on here but more that you'll see it on the app and that's why this, the the connection the combination between the two is important when it comes to what it is you want to do with the watch and again it, it it doesn't necessarily matter what sort of activity you're into so whether you're a runner which clearly the watch caters to a lot if you're in a running but if you're in a rowing, you're into mountain climbing, you're a cyclist, uh, you want to walk a lot, uh, I don't know, power walking, uh, even if you're into golf, uh, golfers definitely pay attention because there is course data on here and various things you can track specifically to golf, like your swing, and of course, all the exercise metrics that you expect. So there's a lot here, no matter what it is that you're into, really. The main thing, though, and I got to stress this part, is that you have to be into whatever it is you're, you're doing. You have to be really into an active lifestyle and you have to be at least pursuing some kind of goal, whatever it may be, that would warrant you going for something as serious as this. This is not just your run of the mill smartwatch. It is clearly aimed at people who want to get serious or are already serious about what it is they're doing when, when it comes to being active. I'm probably belaboring the point a little bit just by emphasizing who the watch is for at least what kind of user it's for but i i have to because given the price given what it costs and given what its focus is and its limitations especially when it comes to integrating with a phone for example uh it matters that it can't do everything that let's say a galaxy smartwatch will do or an apple watch or something like that those watches are really really good at using apps and integrating with phones that way this watch's pedigree though is in tracking things better than those do when it comes to just being active, when it comes to working out, training regimens, things like that. That's where this watch excels and it obviously kills those watches when it comes to battery life. So you are buying this under those pretenses above all else. And I'm sure that if you are that kind of user where you're training for something, you are working towards some kind of a goal or whatever it may be, being more active or just hitting a new plateau in your fitness career or life, then this could be the watch that helps you get there. However, I don't think it's worth upgrading from the Phoenix 6 Pro, despite the fact that there is some better sensory technology here and the flashlight is cool. I just feel like if you already have the Phoenix the 6 Pro, you don't necessarily need to go here. You can wait to see what Garmin's gonna do next. But if you have something older than that, this might seem like a good enough upgrade. So consider that. And that's my review of the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro, available now at Best Buy. You can learn more about it by just clicking the link below. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.